Hey guys, uh, got a little update here. Actually, um, I think I've got the problem solved here. Uh, last couple of videos you've seen on this Powermatic uh, 27 Shaper uh, that I've got set up for running cabinet door parts. I was having an issue with the power feed, and as you can see here, uh, this is a Delta power feed, not a, um, a no-name power feed. And here is the no-name power feed that was uh, on that Shaper. Uh, so basically what I did was, is um, I swapped out the two power feeds. And uh, long story short, if you didn't have a chance to watch the other videos, uh, this power feed here was sold to me as a uh, 16 feet per minute um, power feed, not uh, anything else. So if you see if I can zoom in here a little bit better. Here we go. If you uh, look at this... Um, the speed rate chart here it's actually kind of poorly uh, put together but anyways if you look here it says feed rate 50 60 Hertz and it says 6 meters a minute or 20 feet per minute and then uh, bleeding right 5 meters a minute and 16 feet a minute anyways the only way you're going to get 16 feet per minute all this power feed is if you were running at 50 Hertz not 60. Um, obviously the lower the frequency the lower the RPM. So anyways uh, I was having some issues running some uh, styles and rails and maple and I uh, was literally just chewing them up and uh, just was not working out well. All the testing I did with this power feed prior to when I had set the uh, jigs up here such as this uh, straight edge uh, never was an issue and um, so now when I want to run some uh, maple here, such as these uh, rails and styles, it uh, became uh, kind of unstable. Let's see if I can find something here that's... Ah, here we go. See that nice bow in there? The way this works is... Excuse me. This goes up against this fence, like this here. And the power feed is at an angle this way so that way it keeps it against this fence what was happening because of the aggressive power feed was actually the cutter was actually wanting to pull the piece in a little bit and uh, so basically just hog off a little bit more at the beginning until uh, all three rollers got a hold of it then it would straighten out so um, I was thinking it was the feed rate so I thought you know I just need to take a chance so I took the time to move this uh, delta power feed on here and uh, in the process because of the way this uh, arm assembly is I couldn't make it over to this corner where the other power feed was so I was uh, reluctant to uh, drill four new holes and just miss the webbing on the underside of the uh, cast iron table and uh, mount this one so uh, this one's probably going to stay on here I've had this power feed for Boy, I was in high school yet. I was like a junior. Um, now I feel old. Uh, back in 1994, I think. So this power feed's 18 years old. It uh, had a couple little things that gone wrong with it. Uh, originally, the capacitor burned out. Now I've got a, a capacitor on the outside here. Um, there's nothing inside here except for a switch. Um, long story short, the Taiwanese motors typically come with a dry fill capacitor and the replacement capacitor part was 60 bucks versus uh, this capacitor here uh, like seven dollars plus my gas and time to go get it so um, I just mounted on the outside here and got it all uh, covered up so you don't get electrocuted I don't want that and uh, that happened about 10 years ago and then um, um, I would say that uh, then about a year after that, actually, uh, the motor was burnt out. I had a dead short in it, so I had it rewound because the new motor uh, was like $450. Well, that's uh, in today's Delta price, that is um, about 150 bucks away from a new one. So um, at that time, I just decided to have it rewound. It cost me about 150 bucks, and uh, it actually runs cooler than it did before. So, um, so anyways, so that's the power fit in here. I'm going to. Uh, I need to run um, some styles and rails here for a corner cabinet that I'm working on. And uh, so I'm going to use the whole setup. I'm going to cut the tenons first, and then I'm going to cut the groove in the styles and in the rails.
So that is how you get things done. A little frustrating that I had to go through all that work, but um, hey, guys, guys got to do what you guys got to do. Um, I just have to say I'm a little disappointed in that power feed, but uh, I'll get it to work on the uh, on the other uh, benchtop saw here that it's on, and um, we'll make it work. But it's just kind of frustrating because uh, you know you spend a lot of good money on this equipment and then only find out it's uh, not what it was advertised. And I guess I could see how the manufacturer could, uh, you know, say that this runs at 16 feet per minute, but uh, everybody knows it's a mathematical equation. It's a simple math that if you run at 50 hertz frequency, your motor RPM is slower. Therefore, your feed rate would be slower. So, um, yeah. Anyways, and then to try and figure out this diagram on top of it yet, that's uh, something left to be desired. So uh, this is one of the worst diagrams I've seen for feed rate. So, and uh, look at this here, made in Taiwan. Well, hopefully our economy will pick up again where we get stuff stuff made like stuff like this made in the U.S. again. But I think it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. So. Like I said, this worked out to kind of a good thing as well. Me and this motor is 220, um, and I have a uh, Balder um, VFD on here. I was actually able to tie the um, power feed to the input side of this uh, VFD, so that's uh, so the way I was able to take power uh, to get to the power feed. So rather than having another receptacle. Um, to plug into so because um, I only have one uh, 30 amp 220 and then a 20 amp 110 uh, so but anyways so uh, it is up and running and um, I'm not a <laughs> I always thought this is a bad um, karma here but uh, a Delta power feed on the uh, Powermatic Shaper. <laughs> so, anyways, I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, video and um, I'll have more to come. Thanks for watching.